Hello, welcome again to the west of Scotland. I'm Alistair Ben. you're watching Expressive Photography. Um, the weather is uh, a bit on the wild side again. Yesterday calmed down quite a lot, but the winds picked up again overnight. We're getting more of these showers coming through. And we'll come to a beach on the west coast uh, of the island here. The tide is coming in and the landscape changes by the second. When I first got here, the river had carved quite a nice channel out into the bay here. And there was a very highly sculptured edge, as you can see from this little piece of video. And I knew that with the incoming tide, that this was going to disappear very, very quickly. So forgive me for not recording that uh, a little bit earlier. But you'll see from the photographs in the series of images there, how quickly things changed. We had this lovely sharp defined edge where the sand was basically breaking off into the river. And then as the waves have increased, they're surging over. They actually go over the lip of that sharper edge, creating a much softer diffused curve. We got a tiny bit of pink light on the horizon for the briefest of moments, which I think I captured. Very, very simple setup, 2470 in a vertical 4x5 composition. I'm not the biggest fan of 3-2 verticals, as many of you may know, but the 4x5 gives it quite a compact feel. You're managing to show the width of the... You're keeping the width as kind of in reasonable proportion with the height. And what that does is it doesn't... It makes it feel vertical, but not too vertical, if that makes some sort of sense. It still feels quite contained. And what I managed to do there was a number of different exposures looking from something a little bit faster, maybe three, four, five seconds, right up to about 10 to 13 seconds. I did use my case armor system there, just with a circular polarizer to take some of that shine off the water to allow that rich peaty color of the stream. It's another factor on the west coast here. So many of the rivers have that deep saturated peaty color, the same that gives our whiskey that lovely flavor. So yeah, Quite a simple composition when I first got to the beach. You have to act fast. This rain has come through. The lens starts getting all covered in water. It just becomes a bit of a fight, really, to try and make the shots before the conditions just overwhelm you. So, again, it's going to be one of those days. The forecast for this afternoon is actually to improve, and we're hoping to return to some of the places we went in a couple of the other videos that I've shown you recently go back to some of those locations, slightly different conditions, just to see how different repeated visits to the same location can deliver. So as this rain eases, little pulse going through, as it eases, I'll get the gear out again, have a look around, see what's resonating, see what's attracting my attention. It's quite a compact little bay, this one, with quite a lot of diversity from the two different sides. Uh, different viewpoints and as the tide comes in the whole architecture of the place will change this is the wonderful thing about seascape photography it changes literally by the second uh, so yeah I will get we'll get wet again no doubt but fingers crossed we'll manage to deliver something that's kind of aesthetically pleasing but again I'm just happy to be here One of the things that I think is really, really important is to appreciate that creativity is not constant, our enthusiasm isn't constant, our passion isn't constant, the weather conditions and our relationship with the landscape isn't constant. 
And much like the tide, there's an ebb and flow to our creativity. And those moments where you're truly in the zone, truly in the moment, are precious and they're not necessarily that common. But one of the biggest barriers to that, to finding that passion in our creativity, is expectation and expectation of ourself. So I've talked many times about luminosity, contrast, colour, atmosphere and geometry, the five triggers of engagement. And perhaps the most important is going to be the sixth, which is ourselves, our own passion, our own energy levels, our own commitment, our own levels of acceptance and our own willingness to appreciate that we are not always on our A-game, we're not always the best version of ourselves. So what I'm trying to do here this morning is to just allow the landscape to be. Yes, I'm making a film. Yes, I'm having to talk to an iPhone over there and record to an iPhone in my pocket. At the same time, thinking about being creative and keeping an eye on the weather. So there's an awful lot going on, which is perhaps detaching me away from the true experience of being here. But I like to think I've got enough in the tank in terms of my ability to work quickly, intuitively and uh, on autopilot to a certain extent, I can do a lot of this stuff and hopefully still make some reasonable photographs, but that remains to be seen. So I'm going to get on with this, see if I can pull something out here, and then perhaps we can talk about the composition and why it may work or may not work. So what I think I'm trying to do here is to somehow understand that there are various elements to this. If I do, I'm doing a couple of second exposure. That seems to be how long it's taking for the water to recede past this uh, little rock in the foreground. Now I've centered this composition to try and make this the focal point in the bottom there and then just a little bit of mirroring on either side of the, uh, the headlands there. And what that's doing is creating something of a symmetrical composition. Now, the way, this, the, way the, the water's coming in, the wind is slightly coming from my, right hand, uh, my left hand side. And what that's doing is it's kind of pushing the lighter, softer surf off to the right as it's receding the wind is actually doing an awful lot of the heavy lifting to move that water around. So when we get a bigger wave coming in like this one, as this one recedes, and I'm using the two second timer again, so I'm having to predict somewhat where it's going to be. We're getting some interesting kind of confluences of water moving around this rock. And the bottom line is you've just got to keep shooting. There's so much randomness to the way the water moves. There's so much serendipity to one that might actually work. See these big things coming off to the right hand side here. Everything's getting pushed off to the right by the, the wind and the, the topography of the beach. So there's an awful lot going on here. Now this stuff, you can see these streaks. Sometimes it's better to wait until a little bit after the height of the wave and all these black marks in the beach, these are actually caused by the tripod legs. Now this is, might be a good one here, but that wave, the wind picks up, but then I'm going to let this sort of slightly more minimalistic streaking, and I think that works a little bit better. So again, the, the bottom line is that, is this going to win an award? Is it going to be on the cover of National Geographic? Is it going to suddenly you know, make me world famous? No, probably not. But I'm engaging in this experience. I'm enjoying myself. It's not raining. And that's always a bonus in, here in Scotland. So, you know, it's okay. It, I'm not mad about the composition, but I'm certainly having fun.
this last exposure is just a little bit quirky. Um, <laughs> I'm really lying by omission here. As you can see from the wider video shot, there's quite a lot of busyness just off the side of the frame here. In fact, if I zoom right out, you can just start to see it. But I'm trying, and now the composition's gonna disappear as the sand just erodes. There we go, that's it. <laughs> see how fast, I'm just gonna take an exposure there with the water swirling in there a wee bit. But yeah, that's probably game over for this composition. And as you can see, the water's come up over the top there as well. So again, it's just another example of how quickly these things can just come and go. But what I did have was, there's quite a lot of nice pattern in the bottom of that pool there. Um, and I was trying to get some of that and by eliminating uh, if I just move the camera around slightly you'll see there's an awful lot I'll just open up the exposure so you can see that it's quite an awful lot of chaos and randomness all in that bottom left hand side there so what I tried to do was just sort of get rid of some of that and now we've got a somewhat unattractive and smooshed um, <laughs> little composition that now doesn't exist anymore. But yeah, I, it was a bit quirky that one, but I think I kind of liked it. Well, that's the end of another session here on the west coast of Scotland. Nothing pleases me more than playing uh, by the water. I was like that when I was a child. Uh, not a lot has changed in that time. Just that little last session there down uh, actually in the river there, the water playing around with those beautiful red rocks. Uh, that's the sort of stuff I can quite happily immerse myself in for ages and ages. Um, but I think the key thing from today's video is, I mean, the weather's changed so much since we arrived. It's brightening up significantly. Um, there's a lot of sort of warmth in the air uh, in terms of the light, not so much the temperature. And the tide has come in further, changing the, the beach, changing the, the whole way the, the sand and rock and water interact with each other. So. The thing to remember is that the landscape is a fluid, moving, changing place. It's very rarely constant, and neither are we. Uh, we change, we are, our moods come up and down, the same as the tides go in and out. And what I've hoped to, to try and demonstrate this morning is that when we find those moments of harmony between the changing landscape and our changing sense of engagement or excitement or passion or creativity sometimes we get those little points where the energy just magnifies the shots get elevated as just the whole thing starts to dance and become a much more harmonious situation we put too much pressure on ourselves so much of the time to perform to get the great shot to achieve something to be seen to be performing at the highest level on a regular basis whereas at the end of the day we're just human I'm no different from anybody else I have good days I have bad days just the same as the weather has good days and bad days 
go easy on yourself if you're learning if you're at the beginning of your photography journeys realize that you don't have to be on your a-game every single time you come out into the field sometimes it's okay just to play sometimes it's okay just to try something out and experiment you'll never learn if you don't fail you'll never learn if you don't try so that's the message for today hopefully you found this enjoyable I certainly have so that's a bonus for me if you guys get something out of it as well then that's perfect and everyone's happy we're going to pack up and we're going to move to another location thanks for watching do the old thumbs up and subscribe that always helps us out and please if you haven't read any of my ebooks luminosity and contrast the color of meaning and creativity superpowers please check them out and I'll give you a 25% discount for the next week or so if you want to try and dive into that as well so please check that out and hopefully you'll find those as useful as many other people have in the past that's it pack up time have a good day bye